listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options. Facebook.com slash The Options Insider or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by MyAx, one of the fastest options platforms in the world. MyAx is now trading options on the Spikes Volatility Index, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction for confident trading, all for competitive exchange fees. It's time to make a change and give yourself an edge with Spikes. Learn more about Spikes at www.myaxoptions.com. Com slash spikes. Options involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. And now, it's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. Right, everybody, it's that time. It's Friday, 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern. Do you know where you are? Do you know where your volatility is? Hopefully you do. It's on this show. It's time for Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. My name is Mark Longo from the brand spanking new, The Options. I guess it's been about a month or two now, but still brand spanking new to me, The Options Insider. Dot com. Get over there, get your options fix, your volatility fix, all your various fixes. We got you covered. People are writing in me lately saying, yeah, I'll just listen to your stuff. There's so much. And I was like, well, hey, I'm glad to hear that. And B, that's kind of what we do. We put out a lot of different content so you guys can enjoy a broad spectrum of options-oriented content. All sorts of good stuff hitting the network day-to-day, hitting the website day-to-day. So just head on over there, check the network, check the app, however you get our stuff. And, of course, if you join us live, welcome to you folks out there as well. Make sure you hit us up. Questions, comments, insights, pearls. That's how we stay on the cutting edge, the bleeding edge of volatility, by listening to you folks out there and hearing what you guys want us to talk about. And joining me to have a crackling volatility conversation. First, I'm pleased to have him back on the program. It's been a little while. We are joined once again by the rock lobster himself, Mr. Andrew Giovinazzi from OptionPit.com by way of Carmen Lyon Capital. Mr. Rock Lobster, welcome back to the program. How goes your volatility viewing? Um, I were I the volatility volatility viewing is it's I'm looking at it go down instead of you know instead of the spikes they're now the yikes because ball's going down. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yikes! I like that. Down. I think I think you're coining new products for them. Spikes is for the yeah, general day to day. You got a big downturn. You turn to the yikes. I like that. I like that. Well, the yikes. The ball is coming out. You know so, the um, this gold gold on this program twenty four seven here. I love it. Well, you know we we try to provide. We even though you're kind of a little bit of a bumpkin here, I've become one. Um, I still try to I still try to give it to you when I can. Mark. Got you nuggets every now and then. That laughter means we are joined in the Myax hot seat, appropriately enough, by Mr. Shelley Brown, the executive vice president over there at Myax Options. Shelley, can I take it from your laugh, sir? That you're liking that yikes idea. What do you think? I, I think it's funny. I don't know what to list with that symbol, but I like the idea. <laughs> yeah, people have tried those Vix up, Vix down, volatility up, volatility down products in the past. I think Yikes could be a good volatility down product. You would know instantly when you see that product what it's for. Oh, I'm trading the Yikes today. Sounds like a great name for a leverage short ETF. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> I like when, where when you launch the when you launch the Yikes futures, you know you got something. 
All of a sudden, the blockbuster will hit. I like where your brain is at, Shelly. That's, that's good stuff. Let's see where the market's brain is from a volatility perspective. It is time for the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the volatility review. All right, everybody. Welcome to that good old vol review. That is indeed the portion of the program where we break down the week that was and indeed still is from a volatility trading and trending and analysis and developments and all sorts of fun perspective, maybe some unusual activity. Mix it all in there. You got the vol review. And it looks like the markets in general, kind of dependent on where you live in the market, liking today to various and differing degrees. <laughs> uh, we've got the NASDAQ leading the charge to the upside up over a percent now, 1.05%. S&P playing the Goldilocks up about two-thirds of a percent. And the Dow saying, eh, being the stubborn little kid throwing a tantrum, saying, I'm not going to play. I'm going to sit here pretty much unched on the day. Uh, looks like Barron's put out a piece today. Bar- Dow stuck in neutral. It looks like that is the case. Dow can't get out of its own way today. Pretty much almost exactly unched. Uh, gold and oil getting a little bit of a lift today as well, but not much. All this uh, green on the screen means VIX cash and spikes deciding to take some breaks today, VIX Cash is at a, was at around twelve and a quarter, uh, coming into showtime up a little bit now, at about twelve forty or so. So that puts it down a little more than a handle from our last show last week, about a little handle and change. Spikes is about twelve seventy five, and it's staying stubbornly persistent at that level. It hasn't really moved a lot. Uh, today, while we've seen a little bit of vacillation in VIX, which is kind of interesting. Spike's also enjoying a hefty premium over VIX cash right now, about a half a handle. Spike's at about 12.75 here coming to show. That puts it down about three quarters of a handle from where it was this time last. That's an interesting one. I think we have maybe a listener question about that later, but that is an interesting, the ebbing and flowing of, of the Spike's premium has been a fascinating thing. Uh, to watch a lot of what's driving or what's driving, I should say, the market today is a lot. You know, it's been macro earlier in the week, but now we're firmly into the teeth of earnings season. Big names popping off yesterday after the bell, and indeed before the bell today. Twitter up, uh, looks like about oh, he's a percent, up about ten percent today. Google L, aka Alphabet, up about ten percent as well. Some of some of the big movers today. We'll get into more of those names in a little bit when we do our earnings volatility breakdown. Amazon as well. But let's start. He hasn't been on in a little while. Let's start in the land of the Rock Lobster. Mr. Rock Lobster, a lot popping off this week. We'll get to some of the specific size activity in a little bit, but it's been an active week on the vol side. But uh, in general, what is catching your eye in this kind of weird back and forth volatility week, sir? Um, I, two, I think, big things. I think we had a low settle for a low close for the VIX spike complex this week, I believe for 2019. Uh, if it's not the low, it is dang close. And we also have the highest premium over parity for vol futures, VIX futures going into uh, like with three weeks to go, which is what we have. So we have uh, what well, the 21st is the, settlement um, and today so like we have three and a half weeks to go so it's like so we have a ton of future premium we have a relatively low um uh cash index of all prices and um we have not seen that in holy guacamole in a long long time like since september um so as a watcher of this this is usually the vol breaks two ways um Either we have some kind of event nobody expects um, or we are going to see some sustained lower vol and um, potentially, you know, higher SPX. So that's kind of how it usually breaks down when the future premium gets this expensive. Um, So, uh, you know, then you set up trades around that. I think obviously we're waiting for the Fed to say something next week, which could take uh, the future premiums back to what I would call a, a, a normal uh, premium over parity level. Um, 
that won't happen until like Tuesday, Wednesday next week. So I don't expect a whole lot more movement. To be honest, I I think they they crashed all vol pretty hard. Um, the market is basically saying the Fed's going to cut. Uh, it's going to make everybody happy for a while, and stocks will go higher and vol will go down. Um, so it just remains to be seen. We still have to see it happen, but that's the uh, and I, the earnings are surprising everybody. I think in general, so. That was, I think, there was a little expectation was earnings weren't going to be as good, but um, wow, surprised they are. So um, that's what we got. Those are the those are the things I'm noticing this week that makes that makes volatility interesting. It is it is very much an interesting week, and you're right. Settlement time. We didn't get a chance to really chat about it. Settlements are in. We had the spike settlement at about twelve fifty nine. Shelley, I, I always joke, but you know, you're kind of in the big boy camp. In the volatility space, when people start grumbling and groaning about your settlements, you, you getting any grumbling and groaning? Have you graduated that level yet, sir? Uh, no grumbling and groaning yet. Everything's been going smoothly at settlements, um, so no, nobody's complained. Although, as I said, we've we've done some things to improve over the existing product, and don't don't see any reason for people to grumble. There's always reason to grumble in the volatility. Have you ever met a trader, Shelley? I'm not sure if you know this, but they're um, not exactly the most optimistic, bright and sunny, cheerful lot. <laughs> if there's a reason to be, to be pessimistic and just generally bitter, they will grab onto it and cling to it for dear life. So, yes, I'm sure those, those emails will be coming forth with, sir. But, yeah, you're right. Uh, settling on the lows kind of for both there, Mr. Rock Lobster. Which is kind of interesting. That's kind of just the the way of the volatility space, you know. They once they once they set a low or a high, that's when the markets feel free to move off those levels. Speaking of coming off, we see our friend Vivix, aka the volatility of Vix, still waiting for the Viking. Got any updates on the Viking, Shelley? When we're going to see the the volatility of spikes? Uh, we're working on that project now. I think you'll see something in the, at least an announcement in the next few months. But our focus today and for the next coming weeks is primarily on getting the future listed up on our friends at Amjax. Oh, silly priorities. Who, who wants to have a physical product listed when you could have an esoteric volatility index you could disseminate? What's, <laughs> why would you prioritize a product? I, I don't know why you would, you would do such a thing, sir. But I look forward, to, look forward to having both of those actually to sink my teeth into so I could compare and contrast as we are wont to do here on the program. But as for now, we're stuck just with VVIX. That's down about 81, 81 and a half or so. That's down about two handles from where we were last show. So again, remember I said it last time, you start, we got close to that 70 handle and then it kind of just popped a little bit and we're getting down to that range again, 81. I mean, it's not instant, not the second it touches 79.9 does it explode to the north. But you know, once you start getting into that range, things get a little bit poppy. Things get a little bit, they tend to move. So these are the times when keen-eyed volatility observers need to have their heads on a swivel. Stay frosty out there. Uh, You never know what's going to pop up. Speaking of popping up, the futures have been popping up of late. Uh, With the cash around 12 and a quarter, we're seeing that front aug contract at about 1430. So pretty much about exactly almost two points north of the cash. So seeing a little bit of a healthy contango, at least coming back into that front part of the curve, not seeing the cash and everything else just backward all day long like we pretty much had for a lot this year and didn't just weirdly flat. You go two months out, you had about a 15.75, so you're talking about three and a half points premium out there. Mr. Rock Lobster, anything anything's coming to mind or surprising you in the futures curve? And are you starting, now that we're getting down to 81 again, are you starting to perhaps get your head on the swivel for the VVIX pop that that is due anytime now? Um. So usually what happens when vols is cheap is I buy strangles and VIX, but I buy them in the money. Uh, or you go to the spikes, you buy just you buy the in the money goodies. Um, so in the money goodies, like, I like that. Yeah, yeah, like like you like fifteen put sixteen call stuff like that. Uh, I have on the sixteen seventeen right now. Um, bought it a little while ago. It's it's making a little bit of money, um, but you've got all this embedded premium like so. You know, all the vol products run off where the futures run off of, and that, that's a much higher number right now. So, you know, I, I look at in the money um, because if the current trends go, you know, we could see we could see sub twelve. Uh, and I got some guys in the pro chat room. They're like, "Wow, no, it ain't." And but you know, it could for a little while, which is all you need with um, 
those type. But you know, a 16 put has a four dollar intrinsic value or close to it right now, and it's only trading for uh, two dollars and fifty cents. But I think even you can get away with the cheapy one on the 15 type style put. Um, and if if the Fed says, you know what, the economy's great, we're not lowering rates. As a matter of fact, we're going to hold. We're going to change our mind totally. <laughs> we'll probably be down three percent on the open. <laughs> or after they announce that on Wednesday or whatever, um, and you, we could be the spikes will get their name. They will live up to their name, and we will spike probably sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Um, so that's how I, I see that. Try to play the VIX that way. That way, uh, you know, you play the slide, but you don't have to. Um, you don't have to get hosed when. Uh, well, we spike. <laughs> I guess is the easiest way to describe. You're just, you're just full of the spikes puns today, aren't you, sir? Oh, well, you know what? You, you, you get it served up when you know when you have when the name is Spike. It's served up to you already. The name does lend itself to a lot of puns and alliteration. It is it is a useful one from that from that perspective. Speaking of the old spikes, let's let's dig in a little bit. See what's lighting it up. Let's break down the uh, top. Let's do top five positions are pretty similar from last week out here in spikes land number one with a bullet still remember we talked last week about that one by two rolling in for size he is indeed still open Ten thousand of the step 25 calls taking the number one spot so again ten thousand that's a good clip number two we got the aug 26s for 6100 of those bad boys number trace numero trace here what's that movie we don't speak of trace ferdinand that was a that was a funny one we do not speak of trace uh, I digress, though. <laughs> Spikes. Uh, we got the SEP 17s, 5,000 of those bad boys. Number four, the AUG 18s. And round out the top five here, we've got the AUG 24s, a little over 1,000 of those bad boys. So interesting stuff, seeing how the OI is playing out, pushing over close to 30,000 out there on the OI right now. So pretty pretty robust time. Shelly, I know it was uh, kind of exciting for you guys to see that, that one-by-two paper. Because, you know, you get one trade. And someone could be just, just, you know, kicking the tires, as they say. You never know if they're going to come back. But it had to be fun for you guys to see them come back and roll. So they're, they're coming out to play at least for another, another month or change here. And anything else catching your eye out there in the Spikes landscape this week, sir? We, we see a couple of other trades, much, much smaller than that uh, 5,000 lot one by 2 We've seen a couple of 20 lot one by 2s go up and some other – some other uh, simple orders come into the market, so there's definitely more and more interest each month. Uh, we, we like the trend. Um, certainly get that one big trade puts us on the map. Uh, but things are, thing, again, things are going well, lots of interest. Once the future's up, I think the, the whole game changes. I concur. You know, that, that will make, make a big difference for a lot of people, institutional players, uh, of course. And, you know, you're kind of right. I'm looking at the open interest here. And it is kind of interesting because it is always fun to talk about the 30,000 lots and all that good stuff. That certainly makes the headlines. It leads on a show like this. But I think for, for me, I think a lot of people, I think there's a lot of interest, too, in, in starting to see those 10 and 20 lots trickle in because that's really where we're seeing some of the broad grassroots reach uh, of the product, right? And we are starting to see those. You know, we're seeing the, uh, what is it, AUG 18 puts, 23 calls, all that kind of fun stuff. Lightening it up on smaller volume, which is kind of exciting because that means it's starting to get out there. It's starting to get on different platforms. People are starting to discover it, whether it's through a show like this or just surfing around in the volatility space. They come across what's going on, maybe on their brokerage page. Who knows uh, how they're coming to it? But it seems like just uh, just natively they are starting to make their way to the product. Is that what you're seeing there as well, Shelley? It, it is what we're seeing. and, and uh, Some of them are attracted by the fees. Um, some people are attracted by the functionality we have. Certainly the complex book is all automated, and firms tend to like that. They don't want their orders dropping manual into the pit. Uh, but you know, there's, a, there's a lot of good things in the product that differentiate us from VIX. Mr. Rock Lobster, I know a lot of the super hardcores in your chat room, they're kind of on the bleeding edge over there. So I have to wager a lot of them are probably waiting for the future to go online before they really, before they really start dabbling. But have any of them... Started dipping their toes, maybe a ten lot here or there in spikes yet. Have they have they been lured to the dark side yet, sir? Uh, they haven't been lured to the dark side yet, um, but everybody is waiting for the fu- you know for the future. As soon I think, I think the future will be a game changer. Give uh, you know my ex lots of room to do all kinds of cool stuff. Uh, maybe we maybe maybe you do have the short vol <laughs> the short yikes <laughs> for vol, um, but. I, I think, you know, ultimately, I don't think VIX took off until they really, you know, 
everything had an underlying and was trading. Uh, same thing happened. You know, the OEX was, you think of like all the other products that, you know, they use the, you know, the SPX took over from the OEX besides everybody getting screwed on the exercise. It's the, had the clean underlying, you know, they never, they never launched a 100 future. So, uh, so I just think it's very important for the product to have the underlying and it, it you know, a good price, better execution, all that stuff. It'll, it'll make some headway. You know, it is funny. You're right. You know, that's a good point to have some historical perspective. Everyone looks at the volatility space the way it is right now and thinks it was kind of just instantly formed in a snap. There was a big bang in the vol space, and here we are with all these these high volume products. And yet, you know, VIX, you're right, languished for years. It's just an abstract index on the OEX. They revamped it, moved it to the SPX. Still didn't do a lot. And then they finally got out there and launched. Didn't do it anyway because it wasn't tradable. Then they finally decided to launch the futures, and then we sat with just the futures for a couple of years before we finally got the options on them. And then even then, it was a slow burn until things like VXX really started kicking in, and then all of a sudden this flow started happening. So it's a, it's a multi-part process, you, you, underlying first in the case of VIX, and then the options, spikes going the other way around, options first, then the spikes, or then the underlying. And then usually it has to be a nice little ecosystem of ETPs to help feed volume back in. And once you have that kind of one, two, three punch, then you really start seeing volume kicking in. So we, we're kind of spoiled right now. We have, this, we have these goggles of, of recency where we expect everything to come in and bam, hit hit hundreds of thousands of contracts. So the fact that we're seeing 30,000 lot trades going up already, I think uh, I'll have to go back and look. But I'm going to guess off the top of my head, it probably was a while before we saw similar size paper out there in VIXLAM. Speaking of VIXLAM, let's check what's going on. And it has been, shall we say, an active week out there in VIXLAM, including today. You know, the ADV is about 440,000 contracts. Doing more than that today, 459. So that ADV is ticking up. I got a feeling after today it's going to be ticking up again. Before we get to all that stuff that's going on, let me start with the, the top 10 out here in VIX options land. Uh, we've got numero 10 here. We've got the SEP 24s. That is, oh, there's a couple other SEPs there too. So that's the first SEP here on our list, doing 127,000 contracts. I should say open interest, not trading this week. Open interest, 127,000 contracts. Number nine, we've got the AUG 17s, a buck 34 on the tape. Number eight, the AUG 30s, back to the 30 strike. 135,000, 30, persists. It's, it's fascinating, the persistence of the 30 strike. I'm going to look and see really quickly. I think, you know, we haven't seen the 30s emerge yet on spikes. I'm, I'm waiting for that day. Then we'll know. Then we'll know it's truly arrived. And the, the, the love for 30s has just spread across everyone. Let's go. Number seven, AUG 24 is a buck 42 on the tape. Number six, the SEP 16 puts 153,000 contracts on the tape. Number five, breaking into the top five here, we got the AUG 37 halves. That's been an interesting strike. We've seen some rolling and moving of that kind of paper but 37 and a half dare i say it maybe it's the new 30 it's it's a hot strike for somebody out there buck 59 open there number four aug 25s 208 on the tape numero trace here sep 23 is our final sep on the list 235,000. number two the aug 19s 243,000. and rounding out the top 10 this is more respectable number for number one then 430,000 of the aug 20s for a while there was Buck seventy, buck eighty for number one. That's that's not what we like to see on number one. That's usually mid card at best. So number one, four thirty, a little bit more respectable out here. Seven point six million calls, or I should say, options open out there in VIX land. It's about five point eight million on the calls and about one point eight million on the puts. And Mr. Rock Lobster, how do we how do we describe? This week, uh, would you say the whale is back? Fifty cent, maybe all of the above. It's been a bit of a crazy week, would you say? Uh, you know, anytime four hundred thousand contracts go up um, in a, not only did this is one of the times that usually, as I recall, the whale would buy them, and then there was a time when it looked didn't look so bad. But right now, um, um. I think they're they're down like what twenty cents or something like that already on the four hundred thousand. So, as you would say, that leaves a mark at least short term. So, I think uh, the strategy of the super low vol, uh, they come in and start buying these things again, looking for the home runski uh, of February two thousand eighteen, uh, is back. So, so I, it, for a brief moment, vol really picked up uh, pretty hard in the products, but. You know, you have to think about it like this too. Like four hundred thousand of the twenties go up, and that and that volatility was totally absorbed by the market. Um, so, 
it, I think it does make a difference that those short vol products are not here anymore. Um, but at the same time, uh, this was gobbled up pretty, uh, you know, pretty easily. So I'm, I, I look at it and I go, okay. Um, but I, it, it's weird because it's kind of an inconclusive huge block, even though it's a massive chunk of paper. Um, it's a reason why I like buying strangles in the VIX, though, because like my grandmother said, you never know. <laughs> you never know how you could wake up and what could happen. So, um, But as of right now, that's just it's a huge block, and we're still seeing, um, you know, we're still seeing ultra low vol of all, considering the magnitude, like considering, you know, you kind of remember when breaks it when they crushed the vol prior to, um, like oh, you know, this yeah, that is that was nuts. That, that to me, that we still debate, laugh about that. I mean, it worked out if you were super patient, and but in the in the interim, it looked like the worst trade on the planet. And that was all off one stupid telephone poll that some firm did that everyone decided Brexit was uh, not going to happen. It was a done deal going the other way, and they just annihilated all the vol. And then, oh, whoops, <laughs> we screwed up. Uh, I remember we were talking about on the show. We said, well, maybe they shouldn't be hitting the, the bid so hard. And, oh, lo and behold, yeah, you were correct they, there. They just they crushed it. So, I mean, and that usually, too, and I'm exiting some vol puts today. Um, and if I have a shot, I'll exit some tomorrow, just maybe flatten the delta a little bit, because uh, there's plenty of room for vol to run down, as hard as it is to believe, uh, next week, if, you know, if the, the rosy vol scenario comes to pass. But, you know, you take that early vol hit, and you're like, well, you know, <laughs> it's, it's um, you know, selling vol, because it only stays so low for so long, so it's a temporary direction. Um, not like, you know, stocks can go up and up and up and up and up for years with, it's hard for, to catch a pullback, but you know, vol, vol can move pretty darn fast. So you, you got to take your money when you have the chance. And, uh, at least for right now, I think it's a pretty decent day to do some of it, but it, it does feel like they're kind of selling this a little early. I'd have to admit, like, I know everything's great with good earnings and stuff, but I'm like, dang, 12 is 12. You know, there's not too many. It's, that's zone one. So you know, we're, in the low, we're in the lowest zone. You don't you don't sell the monk. You don't sell the zone of the monk. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing sexy to sell in the zone of the monk. We all know that. that's why it's the monk zone. Have, have they learned nothing? <laughs> I got to rename all my zones. <laughs> have they learned nothing from uh, from this show here? Yeah, the monk. But you know, I, li- I like the way you termed it: inconclusive large block of paper. It's kind of what it is. Uh, but you're, you're, I still go, you mentioned the Brexit. You know, it is funny. That still holds out to me. It's just one of these crazy head scratching moments in the history of the show. We were all looking at this, saying, "My God, they're annihilating this," and the, and the vote hasn't even happened yet, and they just came for it. It was it was so head scratching, and it worked out so poorly in the interim. And eventually, I think if you held on, it did all right. But it was one of those ones where you're like, "Why? Why would you do this?" <laughs> and yeah, kind of a little bit of that today. Let's just give you a, a flavor for some of the of the trades going up just today, listeners. It's just size. Uh, 125,000 of the SEP 25 is going up for 45 cents, exactly mid-market. I think it's fair to say a whale is back, whether it's the whale, who, who knows. Usually that whale puts on his stuff and then kind of continues to roll. Uh, AUG 20s, a block of 60,000, excuse me, for 32 cents, a little bit off the bid. 37,000, these are just sweeps, it's not even spread, these are just sweeps of calls, listeners. AUG 18s, 37,500 of those for 47 cents, a couple cents off the offer there. AUG 20s again, another block, 20,000, 32 cents there again, same kind of price. That's 80,000 just in those two blocks alone. AUG 18s again, 14,722. So you're talking 50 odd thousand of those in a couple of blocks there. Just crazy size paper up here this week. So I think it's fair to say, yeah, A Whale has returned to VIX, whether it's our old friend 50 Cent. There's a lot of a lot of multi-varied paper going on out here. So it's, it's not just him gobbling up these calls. Well, that, that's the way he used to anyway. You know, he'd come in by those 50-cent area calls, hence his nickname. Not so much uh, going up here today. Yesterday, size paper again, 149,000 of the 20s went up yesterday for 45 cents on the offer that time. 60,000 of the SEP 24s. Again, these are just, these are not spreads. These are the sweeps. 62 and a half cents for the SEP 24, 60,000 times. SEP 24 is again, 50,000 more, 62 and a half cents again. So you're talking 110,000 in those two blocks right there, about 25,000. A little bit of Jan, mix it up a little bit. A little bit of Jan love too. Jan 16s for 290. Interesting. 
Those are an interesting choice. That's pretty much, and those are tight too, 285, 295. Um, interesting. So you went up splitting the uprights on them. Let me go to Wednesday, and we got more sweeps. It's just been sweep week. It's like, it's like, it's like network rating, sweeps week. Aug 20s, 110,000 of those again. Aug 20 was the strike du jour this week, 33 cents this time, penny extra. And then Aug 20s again, another block for 99,000 more. So you're talking another 200,000 on Wednesday, 35 cents for that second block. Then we got some funky, you see these flies out here, Mr. Rock Lobster? It was fly week as well. That's why I say it wasn't just our old friend, the whale, or it wasn't just 50 cents. There was something else afoot out here. Let's start off here on Wednesday. It was the Aug 20, 25, 30 call fly going up 25,000 by 50,000 by 25,000 again. So your standard fly ratio here. So another 100,000 contracts going up there. Looks like they did the whole thing for a dime. And then we've got, uh, let's see, I think there were more flies. Yes, on Tuesday, there were more sweeps and more flies. Uh, big fly on Tuesday was another, this time was 20,000, not 25,000. 20,000 by 40,000 by 20,000 of the SEP 16, 21, 26. So if he was rolling, you think he would probably do it all on the same day. It'd be kind of odd to take a day's worth of legging risk <laughs> maybe the paper on uh, tuesday inspired the paper on wednesday it is weird to see the longer duration month go up first and then the aug either way a lot of weirdness going on here that fly went up for 66 cents twenty thousand by forty thousand by twenty thousand times also had more sweeps going on sep 23 is going up actually looks like it was actually i take that back it was a aug 19 sep 23 call spread it went up eighty three thousand by 87,800 times. So, yeah, size paper this week doing it net for looks like eight cents, uh, eight cents debit here. So, just I think funky is a paper, funky size paper this week, Mr. Rob. Would you concur with that, sir? Do you see these flies going up? Uh, they are, they're big flies. And then, you know, with VIX, that you've got the problem of how long it takes that fly to mature. You know, it's not a, uh, because the future kind of lags and all that other stuff. So it's a long maturity date with that fly. Um, but yeah, I think again, we're, we're hitting that low vol and people are buying, you know, it's the smart way to buy vol if you don't want to watch it just rot in your face really fast. So I, I view those as like lottery tickets. Yeah. I was going to ask you about these. You don't, we don't see a ton of fly paper. We see the, the ratio leg of the fly, where, you know, obviously the one by two, this, the one by, you know, those kind of one by six, all those kind of funky things. We don't usually see the kicker leg coming in like you see on the fly too often. And I think there's reasons for that. You're right. It takes a little while for these flies uh, to, play, to pay off. Kind of weird that we would see two size flies for a similar size in two separate months on two separate days, though. Do you concur? If you're going to roll your fly, you do it the same day. <laughs> you I think so, but it's a... Uh... I still, you know, I think everybody's being a little lazy because not much should happen until next week. So I, I think there might be a little bit of that, uh, the kind of, uh, you know, calendar event laziness stuff going on. That's pretty lazy. But I'll tell you what, it's hard to sell any puts today in the vol products. They are not taking squad douche. <laughs> Normally, sometimes, I mean, every everybody's just sitting there, oh, yeah, I finally got a fill, but. Um, my gosh, it's taken a while to get some fills in the wall products today. Just uh, nobody's in a rush to to buy them with all the you know everything kind of dangling down here. Towards you know the why? Because you're not sweeping calls. If you were sweeping calls, you'd get filled in an instant. Sir. <laughs> that's, you that's, get all you want. You, you didn't get the memo at the start of the week. You got to sweep all the freaking calls you want or call flies, and then you're filled all day long. No one's playing puts. No puts this week. You didn't hear that? No puts. In fact, I'm looking at all these top prints. I don't think I see any puts to, to speak of here. Aug call, SEP calls, Aug call, SEP calls, Aug calls, Jan calls. Yeah, I don't see a single put. So, Mr., obviously you're out of step with the, with the broad market, sir. Exactly. No, no puts for you. No, puts, no for puts for you. No puts for you. Let's move on to maybe something that maybe there are some puts lighting it up. And we know you guys like to play in the downside. Of course, our old friend VXX. Getting a little bit of erosion juice kicking back in after kind of languishing around 23 for a couple of weeks there. Kicking in again aggressively, down about a point and a half from our last show, down to 21 and a half. So those downside puts looking kind of nice, kind of juicy. Today, decent volume as well, about 144,000 on the tape. That's pretty close to the ADV, which is right around 200,000. Let's break down our top five out here in VXX land. 
Numero Cinque here is are the, let's see, we got the July 20 halves for, these expire on the 26th, so today, so they're going out today. 20 and a half puts, I'm guessing they probably are not going to make it, perhaps a bridge too far. 30,000 of those bad boys. Number two, Aug 20s, going for 32,000 of those. Number three, the Sep 20s, 20 line, getting a lot of action here. 33,000 of those. Number two, the Sep 17s, 42,000. Number one position out there in... VXX right now, the AUG 19 half puts, nearly 50,000 of those bad boys there. Total about 1.4 million contracts open, about 7 million on the calls, excuse me, 700,000 on the calls, and about 700,000 on the puts. Today's action, though, Mr. Rocklop, this, this is where you need to go for your puts. Forget VIX. It's VXX land, the big print, 12,000 of the AUG 20 puts expiring on the second, going up for a nice dime. Ten, oh, excuse me, 12,000 times. That's opening. So, new paper here in the weeklies. On the VXX, also AUG 19 halves, also more opening, also expiring on the second. These puts going up 8,500 times of those, then a couple thousand more of the AUG 20 puts uh, for eight cents uh, lifting offers. So, Mr. Rock Lobster, if you want to lift offers and puts, I guess VXX was your place to be today, sir. Um, I think I think so. And VXX is the. Uh, I think I have like uh, next week there it's decaying at around 18 or 19 cents a day. Theoretically, you know, that depends where VIX's stuff is. So there is a lot of decay going on. So like 20, 20 VXX is very achievable next week um, without too much trouble. So, you know, and usually, you know, that theoretical low spot, you can kind of see where the bids, where the puts peter out, but you know, there's a bid for the 18 puts. There's a bid for the 18 and a half puts. Um, so there's bids for all that junk, um, and you know, it, the potential. For, you know, puts our bid when there is a potential for a vault crush there. So um, you don't normally see that, but um, you know, there are little tiny bids sprinkled around um, for the downside in the product. So, like I said, we, it it might be it it very well could be a yikes weekend for vault or a yikes week for vault. I'm just saying it. It could happen. People want them puts. Yikes. Yikes all around. Yeah, they do. They want all these uh, little 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 baby puts here, getting a lot of love. Uh, looks like the 20 halves going to be a bit of a bridge too far today. I'm sorry for whoever's got 30,000 of those bad boys on shades of January where the 30 strike <laughs> came so close to expiring in the money but then did not. I left a lot of money on the table for a lot of people I know there. Hopefully, it looks like mostly you can't complain right now in VXX land if you're playing the downside. I know a lot of you are because it has been eroding at a nice pace, a point and a half in the last week. You can't ask for much more than that, especially given what we got going on out there in the futures right now. Uh, you got a nice little, nice little contango to the front. That helps. But uh, in general, it's been flat for most of the year. So getting this kind of erosion, given what we've seen out there in the futures, actually. Actually, pretty good. Let's look earlier in the week on Thursday. Upside calls were the, were the action out there. Hitting the bid on the AUG 28s 15,000 times. Also opening on those. So people crushing a little upside, maybe to finance more of those puts. <laughs> AUG, yeah, 20, looks like close to 20,000. The AUG 28s went up on the bid for 35 cents. So could also be, let's see, is that one of our size strikes? It is not. They're actually, they're about, actually, there are. I'm taking it back. It's out of the top five. It's number seven. There are 26,000 open out there but it looks like uh these these actually those could have opened on thursday that's why they're open today so it looks like someone might have been opening the 28s for size selling them yesterday so there's some short upside is in our top 10 there with about twenty six thousand of the aug 28 so short does indeed seem to be the order of the day you know where it wasn't the order of the day that was out in earnings vol let's get to some of that it's been a big earnings volatility week just a few of the names popping off this week, listeners. TD Ameritrade on Monday, Snap and Chipotle on Tuesday, Boeing, our neighbors across the street here, Boeing on Wednesday, Facebook and Tesla also on Wednesday, Thursday, Amazon, Google, a.k.a. Alphabet, Intel, WWE, and then t- today we had Twitter and Mickey D. so big names popping off this week. We're in the teeth of it. Big week for Fang stocks as well. Uh, let's see here. We had, of course, these reports. You can find these over there at theoptionsinsider.com. Click on the Options News and Articles tab on the top right of the homepage there. You'll go right out to all the articles. You'll see the earnings reports 
right there in front of you. Let's just break down a few of them. We got some looking forward here as well for Apple and some names that are popping off next week on the 30th. But let's go back a little bit before we get to that. Uh, let's see if I could find there's so many there's so many names on these reports, listeners. Trying to find the ones for today. Let's see here. We've got so Twitter. We've got where are the names? We here we go. Twitter. Uh, so Twitter coming into the time of this report was at thirty eight seventy three. Let's see how it's looking right now. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so they were pricing in. 13, almost 14%. So a pretty big move here. And then they, in the past, they moved about 12%, though. So maybe not unearned that premium they were pricing in. That worked out to implied of about 52%. And at least in the early blush, it seems here, Twitter got a nice pop, but not quite that full 14%. On the open here, we got about, it's up about four, actually, me, nearly four handles. So about nine and a half, almost 10%. Pretty close. Hovering right around 4162, but not quite perhaps the massive explosion of premium that some might have been expecting here. Let's look here really quickly. See, uh, let's see if I can find the old Amazon here as well. So many names. So many names. Where is there it is? Amazon. Okay. At the time of this report, they were a wee bit shy of the 2000 level. Doesn't that sound crazy to say out loud? 2000. Of course, is the level Amazon has been dancing around for a while now. They were pricing in a comparatively modest, certainly compared to Twitter, 5.5% from a vol percentage. And past quarters, they've delivered a little over 4, a little over 4.1%. So, you know, for all the reputation that Amazon has as being this turbulent, very volatile stock, you know, point value-wise, it gets a lot of attention because it moves a lot from a point value-wise. But from a Vol percentage-wise, it isn't actually a crazy beast. Only 4.1% is what they've averaged in past moves. So looks like a little bit of a, of a move. And, of course, today they're off 33 handles or about 1.7%, down to about 19.40 here as well. So interesting stuff. Intel, they were pricing in 7.5%. The stock was right around 52 when they went into this report time. So these are obviously like a day or so before the earnings announcement and let's see, in the past, they've delivered about exactly 5%, and today they're off about 1%. Intel's never been, when I was out there trading it, we had a few times when they were crazy, but it's never been a huge earnings mover and shaker the way some of these others, like a Netflix and Tesla, certainly have been. So Intel never kind of been in that range. Let's find the old uh, S-Bucks as well. Uh, Starbucks, of course, was always out in uh, in the IBM pit over there on the SIBO, so you traded well, actually, Starbucks, yeah, it wasn't. So if you traded it's IBM, which was the big pit for a long time, and you traded a little S-Bucks as well. That's how I got, how I got my familiarity with the old bucks here. 25th, let's see, that's when, this, that's when they reported. The stock going into this report was a little bit north of 90 bucks, 90, 11. They were pricing in 6%, almost double previous earning move percentage moves of about 3.3%. So they were pricing in a bit of hefty juice and it looks like that was warranted because it's up nine and a quarter percent today, about eight and a half handles, trading ninety nine and a half right now. So S Bucks Coffee, who knew that was the volatility leader out here today? I could keep going on, but Mr. Rock Lobster, were there any particular? I know you don't. I know you guys don't counsel a lot of earnings trading over there in the land of the pit, but a lot of big names are popping off this week. Anything resonating with your with your crazies there in the pit chat? Um. One, we had one of our uh, pro clients had a, a, a strangle straddle swap in, <laughs> I know it sounds confusing, uh, in Google. Well, the play is he sells uh, straddles near the money and then he buys um, out of the money calls and puts on a ratio. Um, and it was kind of a home run today. But um, sometimes that's a cool straddle. So, yes, we, uh, we do, I do look at them sometimes because um, you never know what – how the market prices things ultimately. So um, I would say, uh, yes, uh, we do look at them. Uh, we did have one kind of a winner. And, um, but overall, usually kind of the post earnings flow is, is pretty, is a little more reliable than the, uh, the earnings, the earnings flow, I would say. So that's where, um, you know, that's where that is at least. Um, but yeah, Google with a hundred dollar move—that uh, was a—that was kind of a winner. So there is some interest in it. 
but we just don't go and sell the, you know, you know, a, a 20 delta call spread or something in earnings. It's just uh, the, <laughs> the penalty on that stuff can be pretty, pretty brutal. You can say many things about earnings flow reliable is not one, not one of them at all. So <laughs> no. you, you know who are reliable, though? Our audience with some great questions. So let's get to some of those with your volatility voicemail. It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com. Sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com. Or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options. Or facebook.com slash the options insider. All right, everybody, welcome to the Vol Voicemail, the portion of the show where you guys take the range, your questions, your comments. Shelly, I hope you put on your question answer and pants today because we've got some spikes ones uh, flowing in. Let's start off with this one. Let's go out to the creatively named LLL77. <laughs> Triple L wants to know, he's got a very, a very simple question. <laughs> I like it. He just wants to know, what's next for spikes? So apparently, Shelly listed in the options, that's not enough for him. He wants more. What do you got for our friend here, Mr. Triple L? Uh, we, th- we appreciate the question, Triple L. Uh, we have several things in the horizon, as we spoke about earlier. We've got the futures coming up, hopefully in September. Those will be listed on the Minneapolis Grain Exchange, MJEX. Uh, but, of course, their technology is uh, CME's Globex. So we're excited about that. Uh, we will begin calculating the Volaval Index, uh, what has been named here in the show Vikings. Um, and our, actually our friends in Minneapolis really like that name. So uh, that, that has resonated with the team. Um, right now we're only listing contracts out three months in the options. Once the futures are up, we plan to go out six months. Uh, and then there's, there's, there's several other products and projects we're, we're thinking about. Uh, some of those I can't talk about yet because they're all internal. One of the big things for our hedgers out there is without a future today, you have to trade combos, and you can trade combos and options on a three-to-one ratio against combos in spikes. Uh, well, we hope to have approval from the SEC in the next few weeks to uh, up that ratio to eight-to-one. So it would be like trading the underline uh, that allows you eight-to-one ratios against combos. And, of course, combos on spikes are greatly discounted. They're a penny a contract if you're using it as a hedge against other spikes positions. Well, there you go, Triple L. Hope that was... Hope that was enough for you. That's a lot. You guys have a lot cooking. <laughs> I, it must it must hurt you to the core, Shelley, that uh, to have a, a product named Viking. I know how how big of a fan of Minnesota Vikings you are. Uh, being a lifelong Bears fan, I can only think of one thing worse than Vikings. Yeah, it's not the Packer, not at least. It Packers. Yeah, if it was the Packer, <laughs> then that would be that would be weird. A and B, that would be that would be far worse. I think so. It, it's a, take take your pleasure in the small victories. Where they come here. We got a good one here, too. Um, this might be a good one to save for the next time Simon's on. We got Ann, Ann Thor. Got some interesting names on the show. I might, I might mark this as, like, you know, let's, maybe we'll table this one. But he's got a question which has kind of been occurring to a lot of people lately. He wants to know why Spike, why does Spike trade above VIX some weeks and below it others? Uh, there's a lot of moving it, parts. It, it, Oh, go ahead, Charlie. Go ahead. There's, there's a lot of moving parts, and Simon, Simon can address that better than I can. But a lot of this has the, the premium and spike over VIX generally happens when we're using the spider options in the March, June, SEP D cycle where the, where the spider dividend is included. Uh, so that dividend is a little bit of an impact on the, uh, on the spike cash calculation because of the premium and the options associated with the dividend. But from a, uh, from a more detailed mathematical perspective, I will defer to Simon in his next trip next time on the show. Yeah, be careful what you wish for, Anthor, because that, that, that answer could get pretty involved. <laughs> but uh, I think that is a good one to say for him when he's back, so he could, he could talk about the nuances of the calculation a bit. But you're right, that old spy dividend keeps rearing its ugly head in many new and surprising ways. Obviously, there's different underlyings, there's different term structures in those underlyings, different skews in those underlyings. A lot of things at work, dividend in one versus the other. There's a lot of different moving parts to these calculations, which is why. But you're right, a lot of people have written in and noticed that same thing. For a long time, it seemed like, 
that Spikes had a safe premium to VIX cash, and now it's kind of ebbing and flowing a little bit, which makes it, I think, a little bit interesting, a little bit fun to watch. You can't just reliably say Spikes is a quarter of a point higher than VIX cash all the time or somewhere along those lines. All right, Mr. Rocklaps, I think we got a question here that I'm sure a lot of our, a lot of our audience shares to some degree. This comes from Shelton. Shelton wants to know, hey, I'm sitting on some decent, pro- decent profits in my VXX Jan puts. He puts in parentheses, thanks to you guys. Well, you're welcome, Shelton. Pay your, get yourself something nice, or your wife maybe, or maybe both. <laughs> with, uh, or maybe pay for your kid's college. Who knows? Whatever you need to do with that money, glad, glad we could help. He goes on to say, my query is, what do I do now? Ah, you and everybody else. I'm tempted to sell them out because I'm up over 2x on the position. But my gut says, <laughs> ah, the old gut, the gut's dangerous. My gut says there is more downside to come. However, I know from listening to you guys that an upside blip can happen between now and then, which will wipe out all of my gains. What about some fairly cheap D or Jan out of the money calls as a hedge? Put some of my gains back to work as a way to hedge the position. You know, Mr. Rocklops, we've had variations on this theme many times on this program. It does seem to be a bit of a recurring conundrum. You know, you got those VXX. I was just talking about how, you know, the 20 puts are out there, and we've had some good erosion, some good juice. So I'm sure a lot of our audience is in the same camp as Mr. Shelton. They're sitting on some nice profits. But we also saw back in 2018 that those profits can go away pretty quickly if you're not pretty quick on the draw. And, and, and VXS could stay at those ranges for a little bit, certainly through an expiration cycle like it did in Jan not too long ago. And I know a lot of people were betting on that 30 strike, and it didn't come to pass. So... This is not exactly an unusual scenario. I think there's, there's a whole cottage industry of exactly how to do this. Everyone's kind of got their own flavor. Some guys like a little bit of VIX. Some guys go a little bit of VXX calls like he's talking about. Some go other ways. You can do the future. There's a lot of ways you can go about doing this. Uh, so I bought you some time, Mr. Rock Lobster. I hope that works for you. But <laughs> what is your – I know you have your newsletter and everything else. What is your, what is your, your go-to methodology when you want to – Lock in a little bit of our hedge, a little bit of VXX profit, or do you think maybe he should just he should just dump it? He's up and take his money and run. Well, nobody ever went broke taking profits, so that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is he's got to. So there's a couple things. One is what's his his profit target goal. So when you trade an option, you have to have an exit. So if his target was to double your money, he he's made it. But if his, if his target is to make four times the money, then, you know, he's got to deal with the slings and arrows of all going up and down. Um, right now, since the event is next week, right, for the FOMC, I would just pick a next week option for in the VXX. That's 15 or 20 cents, something junky. That's what, a one point out of the money? or point, like, I think you can buy the... Uh, the third, the twenty. Uh, what was I looking at? I bought the twenty-two calls for like you can buy for the twenty-three calls are thirty-three cents. So, and you're like, oh, well, he's giving away some of his profits, and yeah, well, that's what hedging is. Hedging, is, but he wants to buy those to let things slide all the way, you know, to press um, his bet. Um, so, what you want is generally when you hedge, I. I like having the gamma short term. So if VIX goes up, like VXX goes up five points, right? We get a spike. Um, You want something that will alleviate the pain or giving up the gain that you already had. Um, The second option is just rolling down. Um, Taking the put you have, rolling to a lower strike at the money, taking your profits off the table, and just waiting another six months. So... Those are your two choices, and they're dependent on how much money you have in it um, and what your profit target is. I think those are the the first two things that I would look at. And we're going to look at some of our own predictions. It's time to move on into the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into the Crystal Ball. All right, listeners, welcome to the Crystal Ball. This is the portion of the show. We got a weird one today, Mr. Rock Lobster, an interesting one nonetheless, because, you know, we make prognostications for both Spikes and VIX here in the Crystal Ball. So we have a weird scenario where that, that premium between the two has made, has made it a bit of a coin flip as to who the winner is. Last week, I was at a 1275 
And between 1275 and 1280, 1275 for VIX Cash, 1280 for Spikes. Uh, spikes at about exactly a 1275. So I pretty much hit almost a bullseye for Spikes. A VIX Cash, though, come in at the end of the show at about a 1230. Uh, so I was off about almost half a handle there, which is kind of interesting. Again, reflecting that premium we're seeing uh, between Spikes and VIX right now. On the flip side, Mr. Uh, Mr. Meatball was at about a 1220 in uh, – I think he actually did it the other way. I think he said – Spikes was going to be under. So he said 12.20 for Spikes, so he's off over a half a handle there, and 12.25 for VIX, which he's about a nickel away there. So we have a bit of a tie. I was a nickel away in Spikes. He was a nickel away in VIX Cash. So I guess you can see my conundrum, sir. What do I do? Well, since it's your show, you will do what you always do. <laughs> do declare yourself the winner and tell everybody to go pound salt. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I will do. I am the winner. <laughs> pound, that, that's a phrase I use every day. Go pound salt. Uh, you know, I will be magnanimous. I will say we are equidistant, and so there is no winner. And so, you know what? I will, I will be so charitable, Mr. Rock Lobster, because you weren't on last week. I will be this charitable, even though I pretty much arguably won and arguably crushed it just amazingly. But outside of that, I will be so charitable as to say, okay, Rock Lobster, you can choose – do you want me to go first and blaze the trail for you, or do you want to go first yourself? Uh, I'm going to go first to give you the opportunity to carp me so the audience <laughs> can actually know I, I probably what owe you a few. Longo is like. I owe you a few there. <laughs> but that's the courage of my convictions. I can go either way. It doesn't scare me. Yes. I'm going to say both Spikes and Vix will be sub-12 next week, so... Right now, there's about a half difference. So I'll say, um, uh, I'll say 1150 VIX and 1195 spikes. Interesting. 1150 for the VIX machine and spikes at 11. New keyboard. There we go. All right. 1195 for the spikes. You know, I could certainly see that. I could see a lot of arguments for that. I'm just not, not feeling. I know it's going to make some of the people. Angry out there who are on the erosion train. But I'm not feeling the full, the full downsize. I'm going to bring myself down. I'm going to bring myself down about a half a handle. I'm going to say about 12 and a quarter here for, I'm going to put that for both around spikes and spikes around uh, the same level. Maybe I'll go, maybe I'll 1230 for spikes to keep that little bit of juice alive. But, you know, actually I'll make it a little higher. I'll go 1235 for spikes and 12 and a quarter for VIX cash. There you go, listeners. 12 and a quarter. For VIX Cash, twelve thirty-five for spikes for me and for the Rock Lobster. He's down. He's down way down to the southern town. Eleven half for VIX Cash, eleven ninety-five for ye old spikes. All right, and unfortunately, that music I means it's over already. This show just flies by. It's over once again. But before we go. They go back around the horn. Shelly, you kind of you gave a great overview of what's next for Spikes. I'm not sure how much you can add to that equation. So instead, let's do this. Let's the people who are interested, they would like to learn more about Spikes, maybe perhaps trade it for themselves. Where should they go? What should they do, sir? Uh, go to our website, myxoptions.com. Click on the Spikes tab. Also on that tab, there's a great white paper by Dr. Peter Carr, which talks about the American exercise and uh, and uh, dividend impact of spy on spikes. That's definitely appropriate given what we were just talking about with the premium, right? Maybe uh, dig into that one. On that page, also a schnazzy little video that kind of explains spikes in uh, in a few seconds for you there. So if you want to get the video overview, it's all there. The index methodology, contract specs, it's all there. Myaxoptions.com slash spikes is the way to go. And, and Shelly, when's your next trip to Chicago, sir? I don't know. My, my state quotient's getting low. What do you think? <laughs> as, as soon as reasonably possible, you know that it'll always be home for me. <laughs> yes. That was uh, that's good times had by all. Speaking of good times, I don't know if he's having a good one or not. Let's find out. Mr. Rock Lobster, A, are you having a good time? And B, if folks want to have a good time with you, where should they go? What should they do? Uh, I'm having a good time. It's uh, it was an okay week, and it's a Friday, so what the heck? And my and I'm still above the ground. So these are all good things. Um, uh, go to optionfit.com. Take uh, subscribe to my vol newsletter and learn how to trade this vol stuff. Uh, it's a little vol wonky, but 
you know, my clients are wonky, so that's the way it goes. Your clients are wonky indeed. Optionpit.com is the place to go. And on behalf of Andrew and Shelly, we'll see you back here next week for more Volatility Views. Thank you for listening to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. For episode archives and detailed show notes, please visit theoptionsinsider.com slash volatilityviews. Be sure to make your own voice heard by leaving a volatility voicemail at 773-669-4VOL or by posting a comment on theoptionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at theoptionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options or facebook.com slash theoptionsinsider.